Well, hey friends, we had to switch gears and we've now switched over to switch gears hot <laughs> doing the oil on the transmission on Chad Ferguson. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go under there. Jake's gonna video me. He's gonna keep the video camera on me and down there. And then we're gonna try to do this funky little deal here because there's lots of oil in here and we don't have lots of pan. So let's see if we can do this without killing each other. Oh, this does not fit well. Where's that other socket? She's tight in here. I don't know, Jake. No, I can't get weight on her. I don't know if I can get a weight on her. Oh, I got her. I got, would you look at that? Okay. Now, what we got in here is your uh, oil that came with it. We're suspecting a lot of water. Yeah, she should be milky when it comes out because the shifter boots on the tractor for the two shifter handles. Were corroded and they let in water. We're all dried up rubber. And as you see, lots of water. That's not good oil. So I'm going to try to do a controlled dump on this. The reason why we're changing this frantically is because we're putting the tractor in storage for a bit. We don't want this sitting in the gearbox, causing any possible corrosion. Would you say that's a lot of water in that oil, Dad? Yeah. Yeah. It's not super brutal, but it's there. So what I'm doing here, um, what we're going to do, is I wasn't able to find a, a good quantity of SAE 90, which is a GL4 rated oil. So what we've decided to do is we're going to run 80W90, and I know there's going to be lots of guys that complain, oh, you can't run that. But you can. And here's the thing. Yes, the 80W90 does have an anti-wear additive in it. Um, but this is my thought on that. And the anti-wear additive is, is usually sulfur-based. And yes, sulfur will attack white, will attack yellow metals at elevated temperatures. Um, the oil industry is basically making GL4 an obsolete oil code because you'll see a lot of manufacturers and I've con I went called all kinds of distributors and they said the same thing um, there is some niche products available like AMS oil uh, but I'm telling you I'm not paying $300 to fill this with oil because that's what would cost an AMS oil don't get me wrong I love the product I use the product we race with the product the products in all my vehicles but for this tractor I don't, I don't think we can afford it or not right now anyway Plus, with this crappy oil in here, like this, with the amount of water that it has in it, uh, we want to get a good flush going first before we start considering doing any magical oils. So we'll use the 8090, and I don't anticipate getting any elevated temperatures that will give us the problem of uh, attacking yellow metal. And I have pulled apart lots of transmissions. I've been, at, I was building race transmissions for a couple of few years and doing rear ends and doing uh, standard transmissions and I'll tell you you're gonna run into uh, you run into a lot of transmissions that were loaded with with uh, high point gear oil and I can I don't usually find a problem like you can smell it when you open it up it stinks up the whole shop and uh, so I'm gonna do that right now I'm just gonna hold that in there because this pans about as full as I want to get it so if you see, if you can just hold the plug into the hole, you can do a controlled uh, dump down. Just give me a second, and I'm going to go grab the pail, and then we'll continue this. So what, what we ended up doing was we got a pail of uh, 8090 because it was on sale at one place. And then I, I had some old, I had some, uh, some liters in stock that I want to get rid of, so we're going to use that. And between the two... No, I don't smell anything in there. Let's uh, take a shot of it. Jake, I'll go get the drain pan. So we can see. No, nothing sparkly so far.
Yeah, so we got uh, Canadian Tire up here in Canada. That's our big automotive dealer, or automotive parts kind of, oh, they sell everything. So it's like a Walmart of automotive stores. Um, they accept their used, mo used oils, which is nice. It's kind of an environmentally positive thing. But there, you can have a look at the milkiness of that. And I've seen worse. And this isn't totally crazy. But it's not totally good either. That's what I got there. I don't know how much we're at. I don't want to make a mess in the driveway. Go nope, back down we go. Not bad for a guy too old to be doing this shit, but. And there's two drain plugs on, on this one. Well, there's three, including the engine oil. But, uh, uh, oh yeah, is that magnetic? That might be magnetic. Look at that. Oh, maybe not. Something going on there. Is that for? Is that full yet? No. Oh, a go. Lot of oil. These tractors hold a lot more oil than we're used to. Yeah. Rear ends in race cars, four nine inches don't hold that much. No. <laughs> Starting to taper off now. There. Yeah, that'd be the transmission will be dumped. So we got to dump the differential. And I'll tell you why that I don't mind the fact that there's a hypoid gear oil in this is that it's extremely important that you do not stress the ring and pinion in these things because one, they're ultra hard to find, two, they're ultra expensive, and a lot of guys are using stuff like uh, all-in-one oils, universal fluids they're called. And I'm not buying it. I don't see the logic behind it, to tell you the truth. I don't know what's going on. This this is a cool looking drain plug. For its time, yeah. There's something going on. I don't know what it does. It doesn't feel magnetic. No, it's not magnetic. I don't know what's going on there. And that, that was the first oil change I've done on a Massey. bit of rust in there I think so anyway yeah the whole idea is to uh, protect the uh, the ring and pinion and the differential at all costs because uh, that's not good not good if uh, if it gets damaged yeah you would swear that it was so we'll stop that we'll stop the recording right here we'll get this finished out we won't bore you guys to death well, let's just see. Because I gotta do that back one anyway. Let's stop this for now. God, that feels janky. I don't know why. Threads? Yeah, I don't know why. It goes in nice by fingers and then it gets a little bit tight. Let's see what we're getting here. Get a fair amount of oil there. <clears throat> So yeah, like I was saying, the ringing pinion. I, I get arguments all the time about that. And uh, the problem being is when the tractor is doing work and it's under a lot of load on those drive tires, like the situation, not necessarily like I'm talking about when you're plowing. When you're plowing, that's when all the loads on that differential and that and that ringing pinion gear. So. I mean, you can, you know, you can argue that something like haying, it doesn't gonna, you know, it's not a lot of weight to drag the, to drag the, uh, the baler around, or, the, you know, a cycle bar more or something like that. I mean, there's load on the motor, but the, the load on the motor is via the PTO shaft, so you're not seeing that load on the, uh, on the differential. 
so what we'll, you know what my logic is to this is to protect the differential at all costs because that's the critical part that's the part that's that's the you know well, sorry, wait, that's the part that's the weak not the weak but the vulnerable that's the word we're looking for so obviously with that vulnerability we want to do our best to take care of it I'm not sure how much this thing's going to hold and uh and I, I just want to protect the hydraulic pump in here. It seems to work pretty good. So I don't want to, don't want to be jeopardizing it at all. Um, everything under here looks pretty good. First time I've been under here. I'm kind of enjoying it. Um, I think what's happening is it's leaking in through the differential. Appears to be flowing that way, which is okay. Yep, this got to be emptied too because it's two parts, but they're they're connected together. So you got the uh, the transmission and the uh, differential differential housing. Just that one sunk's lower than the other, so I guess they decided to uh, put a drain plug under each. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Um, we're going to run the 80W90 in it. Should be good for cold weather performance, but we'll, we'll, we can we can see how that rolls. Because the uh, the 80W90 and what the 80W means is that's a multi multi viscosity oil. And with a multi viscosity oil, the lower temperature, the 80 part, means that the oil has the same viscosity as an 80 weight oil at the cold temperature which is usually uh, 0 degrees Celsius at 100 degrees Celsius um, no 40 degrees Celsius at 40 degrees Celsius the oil will have the same viscosity as 90 weight oil so that means in the summertime it'll be 90 weight oil um, It'll, it'll act the same, and how they do that is with polymers. So the oil starts out thin, thinner. If it was the, just a base lubricant, it would be the thinner number. And then uh, they add polymer to it, which will thicken the oil. Polymer gets activated by temperature, so the higher the temperature goes, the thicker the oil will get. That's where you get that, like 5W30 is 5 weight at cold temperature, equal to 5 weight. And then at hot temperature, it's equal to 30 weight. So it's 5 weight cold, 30 weight hot. Same with 80W90. It's 80 weight cold, 90 weight hot. So it gives you the best of both worlds. You have better operating in uh, cold temperatures, ideally. And then you have the protection that you need in warm temperatures. So that's what the whole, the whole deal is with that. So with these oils, um, the modern lubricants, because this tractor is 1956. Multi-viscosity oil wasn't invented in 1956. It came about as part, you know, as as lubricants progressed, um, they became more and more scientific, if you will. Um, they became, you know, they do a lot more. They're able to protect the, the equipment better. So this is what we look at, right? I mean, the metallurgy hasn't changed. Cast iron is still cast iron. And Babbitt bearings are still Babbitt, and bronze and brass, none of that's changed. I mean, this has cast pistons. I don't think they're aluminum pistons in a Continental engine. But none of that stuff has changed. Metallurgically, is basically the same. So the only thing that really is changing and giving these, this equipment longevity is the lubricants. The better lubricants get, the better, uh, the better longevity everything has. So I don't buy into the argument of putting old, lub old lubricant technology into old equipment. It does make zero sense to me whatsoever and I've been a mechanic for 35 years and uh, I've seen it all and worked on it all and you know and you see these things and you just say like what's going on right like where do people thinking that you know the metals they have to change people and, and you know you buy the better quality oil you're gonna get better quality results your longevity is gonna be up there same with Greece you know Greece was crap in the 50s it was, you know, you only had like one type of grease to look at. It was, you know, EP2 and that was it. Now you have so many 
um, you got synthetic lubricants, you have uh, conventional lubricants, you have polyurea, you have uh, lithium, you have... Uh, PTFE dry lubes, like yeah, the list just goes on. On and on, a different technology. I mean, back in the day, it was bentonite clay. That's all they were using for a, for a thickener. You know, and we're using soaps and we're using uh, synthetic. So there's a whole world of change going on. So that's what you got to do is got to stay up on it. So we'll pause it now and then uh, we'll uh, we'll get back to it and then we'll see where we're going from there. Okay, friends. Okay. All right, so we're at the back now. This is in the transmission portion. Yeah. Yeah, we can see some solid water came out. And again, with these open cab tractors, these older ones, if your shifter boots go, they fuck, they they let in water, and yeah, that's yeah. like something that you wouldn't think a shifter boot's important, and in a cab, a closed cab tractor, it's not the end of the world, but dirt and stuff. But these let in water because they get rained on. I never would have thought it, but they're notorious for it, and that's how the water gets in. Yeah, that is the source of the water. Is the uh, down the shift the two shifters goes in the shifter boots so the same thing as the other one right we're getting seeing a lot of water um, you can see there's quite a bit of fluid in this transmission we'll end up filling a couple of uh, couple of jugs yeah it's quite quite different than what we're used to yeah lots of oil that's why the oil change gets expensive on these, so. Yeah, we had to shop around. We were looking at a couple hundred dollars for the oil change, so. Which is, you know, all right, but. But we had the CRB. We were laid off for a while when we got this tractor and different You know, we, do, we don't want to spend premium dollar on flushing, flushing out the mess that's in there. Because this probably hasn't been changed in a few, quite a few years, so. Yeah, we might want to just run this oil for a year and then switch over to a higher uh, something different. Maybe spend a little bit more money on it. We want to do a flush, though, basically. Yeah, basically. And then we'll spend the big dollars on, you know, I'll spend. I'll, I'm okay to spend three hundred dollars on an oil change if it on the transmission and the differential if it means preserving the pinion or not breaking something in the field. Oh, well, you can see the water in here floating on top. Yeah. So this one's done. I think that's five gallons there. I'm not sure. Those are five gallon jugs. I get the other one. This one's completely full. Like I said, these gold gold get recycled. The proper facility. So we go to our local Canadian tire and they let us put it in the oil their oil their oil uh, used oil drum and. They get paid money to, to take it away, so. Recycling of oil is big, big business around here. Now hopefully we got enough drum capacity to uh, take care of the oil. So this is a quick recap. We got a dump. Dump we put out of the transmission. And then we'll go back again and we'll dump what we can out of the uh, transmission once again after we're done the differential. So, <clears throat> um, these aren't hydrostatic drives, these aren't, uh, this is, uh, this is old school technology and, you know, you got to take care of it, you got to protect it. Unless you want to, you know, fix it, I mean, that's entirely doable too, but, you know, these parts are getting harder to find, and I'm surprised, I'm surprised at what you can get, it's pretty good, because a lot of the parts are being made in India, which seems to be, the quality seems to be decent. I don't know, I yeah, I suppose you could get a made in India ring and pinion, seeing as they're building this tractor again over there, but it's probably not going to be cheap, it's probably going to no, be... you got to tear apart the whole tractor. You got to be probably looking at at least three or four hundred bucks for the set, and 
a lot of labor and then you got to know what you're doing and I'm not gonna lie it'd be my first rodeo I'm um, dad would know his way around it but it would be still we'd have to take our time so All right. it's still pouring out pretty good so I think that's probably I can't remember how many parts per million will turn oil milky of water but I think this is around six percent water water to get that level of milkiness to it we did the calculations once I had oil tested in a piece of equipment that was sabotaged and they put oil in, or water in the oil and the lab tested it for me and they gave me the count as to how much oil was in there and the guy told me that the lab technician we use wear check in Canada up here and wear checks you know the guy gave me the idea what it would take to do that okay can you move it away well that's just going to be okay to drain out now we'll let that drain out and then we'll get the uh get the other one ready yeah so it doesn't doesn't smell like uh i mean it's thick so it was probably the right oil and these are magnetic by the way these drain plugs it's just they're they're magnetic weird they're all full of you know it's not bad i don't know how long this has been but there's no chunks there's you know the wear the rubbings as they call it i don't see nothing shiny nothing silver Yeah, there's a little bit of TLC, eh? Not bad. Are we making YouTube videos? Yeah, so we're just doing oil change on the Massey Ferguson. Chad Ferguson is his name. Because he's a Chad. Tractor's name is Chad. Because yeah. he's beautiful. What's spilling? Oil. Yeah. We're dumping the transmission oil out of it because we got to take this to the farm. Ooh, why is she so freaking rusty looking? Yeah, it's got water. water in it. It's milky. It's not good. That's why we're changing it. And the boots are nice and tight on her now. We've yeah, I got two new boots. Got good boots. The first one we bought was no good. It rotted in a few days, but <laughs> that was an eBay special. <laughs> and I don't know where he got them from, but, but they yeah, we good. got the next ones we got from Amazon, and they were nice. Yeah, they're nice boots. So we don't think they're water getting in. Could wrap it in plastic too, just to make sure. Yeah. Not a problem there. So that's better. So that's nice and clean. I'm highly happy. No big chunks. So that means there's no hunks of gear teeth knocked off or, you know, nothing crazy in there. But we should, we'll see how this goes with the fresh oil in it. I mean, just drain that down. You can hear it. All right, we'll, uh, we'll pause the video here and then we'll come back on the fill up. We'll see how that goes. So I got the, uh, that's just dripping down there now on the back. I uh, cleaned the magnetic drain plug. It was magnetic. Got, I put anti-seize on it. I know they were going to say, well, how could that ever seize in there? But I guess it's never going to seize in there because this is never seized. So there you go. So we'll put that back in. And I'm going to go back up to the transmission. We're going to kind of finish draining the last little bit of that now that the oil's had time to pool to the front because we got this thing kind of we got our level, but our level, but I mean, that's just going in like magic with that never sees on there. She'll never see. I don't have the copper gaskets to replace them, but uh, we'll spend some time. We might do a full restore on this, we're not sure yet. Maybe we'll rip it right down. We'll get a sandblaster and paint all the parts and everything. We're not sure. There we are there. You can see it's still crappy oil. And you can expect this in an old machine. So if you got an old machine. Change the oil out in there. Change the oil out in it. Do yourself a favor. And if you think keeping crappy 80 weight or 90 weight straight oil in there like this is going to do you any favors, you're foolish. Um, there's just no point. See that? And that should be everything. Just a crazy amount of oil on this, for sure. But now 
No, I didn't see it. Like I said, I, there's a you know a fair bit of water in it, but um, I'm not seeing anything that's going to make me panic. So that's it. We'll stop the video again, and we'll do the fill. I just wanted to show you the last thing I'm going to do was the transmission because I did the rear end, it was dry and it was always flowing from the rear end into the transmission. So now this is dry, so this was the last thing to do. Um, so that'll be it and then we'll be, we'll be doing the, the fill. Fill's in the top. I'll show you where the fill is on these. It's right next to the shifters. It's right on top. It's right there. And it says summer 90. Winter 80. So guess what? We're going 80 W90. So we'll just get that. We'll get, get that done. And uh, yeah, so we'll pause now, but we'll do the fill up. The drain plug tightened up? Yep. Okay, so we got both drain plugs in, both drain plugs tightened up. Now we're starting uh, to do the fill. Um, we got the... Uh, So the oil that we're putting in here is a bucket. Start with a bucket. Okay, grab that bucket and start. All in our we got our anti-splash. I'm gonna get on the other side, hold on. So uh, make sure you hold it. And that gives you two free hands. We got the tractor jacked up because the driveway's on a slope, so we're trying to keep it level. Okay, go ahead. So there you go, that's the oil going in. And we'll get back to you in a minute. So we got the entire pail over there. That was a five gallon pail, 18.9 uh, 18 liters in Canada. So now we're putting in some new old stock oil that we had. Uh, this is Mopar lubricants from back in the day when we had the race team. Uh, yeah, we're mixing oil too. There you go. That'll upset everybody. We're gonna get everybody wound up today So we're doing that We got this stuff here from called Harvest King and That was on sale at TSC Now we're breaking all the rules here. Yeah, here put that one in Jake Let's get everybody upset so we get all the kinds. We're of... not even gonna do the same order. No We're just gonna go crazy and put this stuff in there Let's see what the dipstick says Still dry. No, still dry. Cause you know, folks. So yeah. Got some detergent in there. What? It's additive. Yeah. So that one's done. Wanna do one more of these? I don't care. And just keep throwing it in there. Just keep filling it up. So you can see that's where the oil goes in. Right next to the shifters. And there's the dipstick down there. Uh, it's behind your feet. And next what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, PTO or uh, live hydraulics into this thing. So we'll have a hydraulic setup coming in next when we get out to the coast and we get working on that. We'll definitely do a video on that. We got a little bit of work to do. I just didn't want this thing set with watery oil in it anymore. It was kind of bothering me. And uh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna lay it up for a bit, a couple months anyway, before we bring it out to the coast and get everything done. So there we go. And uh, sorry if I'm bouncing the camera around a little bit. Trying to do a couple of things at once.
That's just craziness. Two different kinds of oil, three different kinds of oil. The world's gonna come to an end. I think we'll need to do one more of these. Keep track of how many. I think it was 11 after this. It's hard to say, 11 or 12. Because it was 30 quarts this thing takes. Still ain't showing yet, but we'll see. So we'll pause the, pause the video again, then we'll come back. That's the wall goes into one. There's no dipstick on here. There's no side plug. Did you read that right? Yeah, and it was coming through the front, right? Yeah. Just don't turn the wheel. Take that out for a second. Can you start it? Yeah. Holy fuck, it's way up on the transmission. Is it? Yeah. Is it the, the oil? Way down fast. Did it? I think it did. Hydraulics are working. Still not showing though. There's nowhere else we could have filled this? No. The pump's right here. Wanna keep filling? Yeah. Alright. Is that what said in the instructions? There's only one place it can go in? I think so. There's no other oil. There's no other oil place back here. No. I'll keep going. It's way up on the tranny though. Well, I never looked inside before we started dumping it. That's true. Hundred percent. Mopar, Mopar bottles are done. Pass me that screwdriver. I think it's a fucking peel off. So how many are we at? Plus four more bar bottles. So we got four, five, six, that's seven? Yeah. So you said ten total? We still ain't showing. That makes no sense. Where's the oil level at? As far as the tranny? Yeah, take that funnel out. This should be showing by now. Yeah. Are you out in gear? No. Get this shit all off.
the gas. Start the gas? Turn the gas back on. Dry. No. It's showing? I think. Let me see. Back of the blade. Right there at the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. That means it's still touched low. Turn the gas on. It's on. Still needs more oil, eh? Yep. It's weird, eh? It doesn't have a... Must be something going on to get it to flow in the back. Here, flow in the diff. It's already milky, though. Yeah, I know. That's no good. Nope. That means there's a lot of water. I knew that was water droplets percolating on the gears. It's moist in there. Okay, there's no other way of getting it out. Water absorbing filter. We'll put that on when we get the hydraulic pack figured out. So how many is that? Eight. That was eight? Oh yeah. You might even need more oil. I do have more. Huh? Okay, right? A little bit for me. Well? Yeah. That, why is foamy? Because it's got water in it. Yeah, the water doesn't help. 
up a little. How much oil's in some of these fucking hydrostatic drives on some of these monster combines and shit? It's an environmental disaster, isn't it? If they start the Traeger and preheat it to 400. For what? The lasagna? Yeah. Well, it's 20 to 5, right? Yeah. Took Tookie for a walk. Can you, um, yeah. So that's 12 liters on top of the pail. You want this one in there too? Yep. No wonder when these new tractors break down, you're supposed to call them in, eh? So oil. Fuck. even getting there yet to go water in her yeah we're almost at a low mark That's 10. So 30 quarts of feminine. So we got uh, putting oil in. Um, supposed to be 30 US quarts to liters is 20, well, 28 and 3 quarters, so say 29 liters. And we're at there now. And we're almost showing full on the dipstick. Um, a little bit of foaming. We'll see how that if that settles down. Um, could be the moisture in there. Not happy about the moisture, but what are you gonna do? Uh, we'll throw one more liter in there for good measure, and then, uh, well, maybe two more, and then that'll be it. So that's the oil change. Um, didn't take long. 40 minutes and we're gonna run this oil and then we'll check it for moisture later I may I may do a wear check on it we'll see how it goes if it's really full of water then after a while and then we'll just call it an expensive flush but I mean once you get the water in it's a tough system I may put a uh, oil filter on this when we get the hydraulic system on it's just a valve and then it ports back through. So what I might do is just run it through a water absorbing filters. You can get water absorbing filters that will uh, do a better job of cleaning out the uh, cleaning up the water. It's got a a desiccant gel right in the filter pack, and it grabs on to, to free uh, free oil. I've fixed a few systems like that before, so that's always an option. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but just to keep dumping oil through it, it's tough to get the oil out unless you do something like that. So I'll look into that and we'll figure it out. So that's it for today. That's the uh, that's the oil change on the Massey for the transmission in the diff. Um, like I said, we'll finish off throwing a couple of uh, couple of quarts more in there, I think. Yeah, because we're not quite to the full mark. We're getting close though. And uh, then we'll start cleaning up. We've had a busy day out here. It's been a busy day. We got a lot done. For a Sunday too, so let's see where we're at. Yeah, I think we're getting real close. Maybe one couple more quarts. That'll be it. Good enough. Yeah, two more. That's two it. Two more, two more, two more bottles. So there we go. That's it in a nutshell. We got the oil change done. I've been wanting to do that. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully things look better. Anyway, that's it for today. Chad Ferguson says hello. We got some work done on the trailer. We didn't continue on the trailer. I wanted to do a video for you guys working on the trailer, but we couldn't get steel today. can't get steel today. So we didn't get any steel. So what we did was we spent all our time. We screwed down the side panels. We got some of these tech screws. We pulled our wheels off and we pulled the wheels out. We're gonna out. rebuild all four axles. We're gonna put. We're gonna eliminate the electric brakes on on two of the hubs and go with. Uh, electric brake per side, so two electric brakes. Then we're going to put an idler, we're going to go with ice.
Um, we're just going to go ahead and strip them right down to the axle shafts because we don't want to mess. We're going to get all new lug nuts. We're going to get new rims, new tires. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do a video. Them. We'll do a video on the uh, on rebuilding the wheels. Rebuild the wheels because I mean we need we we needed to tear it apart and 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 need to figure out what we'll do. So we'll set a tripod up, I guess, and then we'll do that. So I only got a f six more days left, so I got to keep keep hustling. So anyway, thanks guys for showing up. Thanks for watching the videos. We appreciate being here. Please, uh, please definitely hit the like button, subscribe, right. and ring the bell. Thank you.